So I forgot to mention something in the last video. The reason why uh, money demand falls in the, uh, in the, from the last video is because uh, the price fell and we need less money to enjoy the same quality of life. That's why the that's why the money demand fell because the things that we buy uh, now that the price fell it is cheaper and so we need less money. That's why the money demand falls. But in today's uh, video, what we're gonna go through is recessionary gaps uh, and inflationary gaps. I know I went through them before, but in this video we're gonna include something that we didn't include last time. And the LR options to fix a recessionary gap is. Uh, one way is the natural way, and we know this, and it's when the factor prices fall, which mean the resources to make the goods get cheaper and pretty much our supply increases. So our aggregate supply moves right from AS1 to AS2, and we'll just reflect this in this line, and AS1 go moves to AS2, so it moves. And now the other two ways are uh, some policies that you've already learned and they are expansionary fiscal policy and what we just recently learned, uh, expansionary monetary policy. Now remember that expansionary fiscal policy, it's been a while, but we can't remember that in this case, government spending rises or tax decreases. And for expansionary monetary policy, what happens was, as we remember, I'm sure because we just went over it in the last couple of videos, is that money supply increases or interest rates decreases. And the key words are or. Now, in both of these uh, scenarios, what happens is that our aggregate demand increases. So aggregate demand increases from 81 to 82. And I've talked about this in the uh, in the videos that I did them and so I won't go over them in detail again here. So 81 moves to 82. So let's just draw our line and that's it. 81 moves to 82. And this equilibrium line, we'll, let's, we'll just call it as, uh, we'll just call this equilibrium line as PD. And that would stand for uh, stand for uh, the, uh, the demand moving to fix the equilibrium and we'll name this we'll name this uh, equilibrium PS and we'll just uh, will be PS because we moved supply we moved the aggregate supply to get equilibrium and now for inflationary gaps again the natural way of uh, fixing the inflationary gap everything is pretty much the opposite so the natural way would be to increase factor supply, that means that the resources uh, to make goods get more expensive and we produce less goods. So AS moves left and this will make uh, AS move from AS1 to AS2 and that will cross right here or that will cross right here. Almost made a big mistake there. So moves from AS1 to AS2, moves leftward. And again, the other two ways, as you would have guessed, is EFP and uh, EMP. And again, you already know what, uh, or the, it's not EFP and EF, EMP, it's CFP and CMP. Contractionary, not expansionary, almost a big mistake. And you know what happens in these two scenarios uh, government spending decreases or taxes decreases. Or, I mean, taxes increases. The opposite, right? And for CMP, money supply decreases or uh, interest increases and in these two cases and writing makes my hand hurts in these two cases 80 moves left and it goes from 81 to 82 and you already know the reasons why so I won't explain it here 
and we'll just draw the corresponding line. So 81 moves to 82, and it, again it moves leftward, and you should already know why by now. And yeah, so we'll just we'll just uh, symbolize the equilibrium. So this would be the equilibrium point where uh, it was affected by a move in AS. And uh, this would be the equilibrium point where it was affected by uh, demand yeah, for the price. And yeah, you can see that uh, that the ch that mo everything moved back to equilibrium and it actually works. So yeah, this is the end of this video. Please remember to uh, rate, comment, and subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.